Okay, my loves. I know there are a lot of you that are out there that are really wondering how do I even set boundaries anymore. Maybe you didn't grow up with great boundaries. Maybe boundaries weren't really modeled well for you. Or maybe you were told that you cannot have boundaries. Maybe you're tired of being gaslighted in your relationships. And you're tired of feeling crazy all the time and guilty for trying to make a difference in your life. If this is you, then I want you to come schedule a call with me. Let's chat about the Unashamed Image Program. The Unashamed Image Program is geared towards you specifically. I am going to be helping you in our next upcoming session of the Unashamed Image. I am personally going to train you how to not feel crazy when someone is gaslighting you, how to be able to stand your ground, to keep your boundaries intact, and to also see through the bull crap. I am also going to be teaching you how to set really confident boundaries, boundaries that you can really rely on. And I'm going to help you communicate them in a way that really makes sense. Basically, I'm going to help you live a life free of shame, and on your terms. If you are ready and you are done feeling all the shame and guilt for trying to set boundaries, if you are not willing to live another moment the way you are right now and in somebody else's shadow, then this is the time to schedule that call with me It's completely free, no pressure, just love, just support. Go to www.erinandersonthetraumacoach.com. Scroll down the page to where it says, let's chat about working together. Click on that button and it'll take you to my booking page. If you're ready to live the unashamed life, schedule that call. Let's get you in the unashamed image program, my loves. From my heart to your heart. Bye. Welcome to the other side of the struggle. This is a podcast where we talk about trauma, how to heal it, and then how to take it and use it to unlock your mission and your potential and to use it to live your very best dream life. When you're dealing with betrayal trauma, it can be hard to know how to heal it, how to stop the pain, and to know what your next steps are to take in your own life. And these are the questions that we try to answer here. Trauma has the ability to rob us of our joy and identity, which is why it's so miserable to experience. But with the right tools and with the right mindset, We can totally reclaim that joy and even use this trauma to strengthen ourselves so that way trauma does not knock us off of our joy again. Living your dream life should be a non-negotiable, but trauma tends to try to negotiate that with you. And even though Trauma is not something that we will completely ever be free of in our life. The pain is negotiable. This is why I created Erin Anderson Betrayal Trauma Coaching and this podcast is because I want my listeners, I want my clients to live, truly live free from the prison that trauma can put you in. I want you to live on the other side of the struggle. Okay, I want you to stop what you're doing right now for just a minute. And I really want you to hear me out. I want you to go right now to erinanderson.cartra.com forward slash page forward slash heart of gold. There you are going to find a free meditation just for you from me 
this meditation is amazing. Let me tell you a little bit about what it's going to give you, okay? Number one, it's going to help boost your confidence. If you are dealing with trauma, then you are most likely dealing with a confidence issue as well. And it's something that you are really, really wanting back. Number two, it is going to help you find security in your situations in your life because it's going to help you gain a sense of self-love and some self-trust. The third thing this is going to give you is an ability to escape the trauma that you're experiencing right now, this very minute, and help you find peace and joy and love and a deep appreciation for you and your experiences. This is going to really help you reconnect with yourself. So that is very, very, very important when you are dealing with healing from trauma. So again, I'm going to tell you what it what that website is that you need to go to erinanderson.cartra k a r t r a dot com slash page slash heart of gold capital h e a r t o f capital g o l d go check out this meditation Please claim it for yourself because it is 100% a gift from me to you to help you heal right now from trauma. All my love. Welcome back to another episode of The Other Side of the Struggle. We have back with us the fabulous and wonderful Kushla Chadwick. She's one of my favorite guest speakers and also one of my very good and best friends. And so we have a lot of fun together as we work together um, and as we play together. A lot of fun. Um, but she's also the co-founder with me of the Unashamed Life Coach School, which has been so much fun to do. It's it's, it's kind of fun working with her because we both feel a little bit like, you know, mocked in with our hair on fire <laughs> sometimes with this. But we get to certify, you know, life coaches who want to specialize in helping others with their trauma. And then on her own, she's also the business uh, business coach and the founder of the Confident Coach Academy. She's definitely been on this show multiple times. Uh, everybody loves her. And I don't know if she knows this or not, but actually uh, her episodes are some that get the most downloaded, which is really interesting. <laughs> yes, I, like I know. It. So we definitely love having Kushla mm -hmm. on the podcast. And so let's welcome her back with a giant <laughs> Thank you, Erin. It's a, it's a thrill to be here as always. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So, Kushla, uh, you know, we're talking about coaching frameworks. And, and, you know, for my audience, a lot of them are, you know, men and women who are dealing with betrayal trauma or, you know, there's there's actually many different kinds of trauma. You've got grief trauma, betrayal trauma, physical trauma. Uh, you know, all kinds that can, huge list. Yeah, yeah, a huge list, right? Mm -hmm. And what we talk about on this podcast is actually very relevant to almost every kind of mm -hmm. trauma. Yeah. Um, but not everyone is a coach, right? Like, not everybody feels the inclination to coach. Not everybody feels like, um, they want to get into the coaching field. But some of them are very much into the coaching field and very much into coaching and want to like help other people through their trauma. And so like, I felt like I still felt like this was such a relevant conversation though mm -hmm. for everyone. Absolutely. Um, because, you know, that's one of the things that caused me to heal was actually my ability to self coach. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit more about like 
what is a coaching framework? Ah, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, I love talking frameworks and uh, I will probably talk fast <laughs> because this is a subject that really excites Take notes. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so as far as coaching frameworks, I'm going to speak to firstly the coaches and then very quickly I'm going to transit and speak to those of you who aren't coaches, right? So normally when I speak about coaching frameworks, I'm talking about like someone's program that they're building and making sure that conceptually it's got like a beginning point and an end point, right? So that it's able to be repeatable for you, uh, regardless of whether you're working with private clients, group clients, an online program. VIP day, all those types of things, right? So I'll give you an example. So for me with the Confident Coach Academy, which I've run for years, that's like the first the first kind of part in the framework, you might divide it into four parts, right? Would be like lead attraction, right? And then the next part would be like, you know, sales and like really making those convert well. And then the next part would be like client care. And the next part would be your money mindset. So I've got a framework which I work in. And that's normally where I help my clients when I'm business coaching to do. Now, if I translate over to those of you who aren't interested in being coaches or you're not coaches yet um, and talk about, a framework, and this is where we really want to dive into our conversation today, right, is like it's really important to have a framework to be able to just coach yourself in general. And there is a coaching framework out there. I use it, you use it, you know, yeah. we use it with our clients, uh, we use it with ourselves, and many, many other coaches out there use it. I would love to say that I invented it, but I didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, and I'll tell a little bit of the story behind it, uh, behind how I come to learn about it, maybe as we go into our conversation today. But really, the framework I'm talking about is a self coaching framework, uh, which coaches can use also, obviously, for themselves and for their clients. And it's really based on the premise that, you know, we have our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. And while I'd love to say, oh, yeah, you know, the conscious mind, it's the powerhouse. It's where our freedom lies. It's where our agency lies. That's where our awareness lies. It's the subconscious mind that's running most of the things that we do day to day, like 95% of the things that we do day to day, you know. And for some people who lack a lot of awareness or lack a very, um, what's the word? they just lack general awareness of how they think throughout the day. It's probably higher, like, you know, 98% of the things that they do through their day are just completely on default and they're doing very little original thinking. Uh, and so we want to be able to address that if we've got big goals, if we've got big dreams, if there are things that you want to do. And it could be like aspiration based, like for instance, you know, uh, I might want to, I might work with a client who wants to make their first $250,000 a year, right? Or their first a million, right? And then there might be some of you who are coaches and you're like, I help clients who, you know, want to be able to create a, a hot body, a gorgeous body and have the best health of their life, right? So, I want that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, right? Uh, uh, or, or it could be like overcoming the pain or struggle. And that's where a lot of people do come in as well. But they're like, my relationship is failing. Your clients, um, the, they want help getting over the heartbreak of discovering that their husband has got a really strong porn habit or a porn addiction, right? And they need to deal with that so they can get on with living again and, you know, functioning in a healthy way. So whether... Whether it's aspiration based that someone's got a goal or it's overcoming a struggle, there's big goals that we have and there are things that we want to do. And if you've never done them before, then uh, we need to really make sure that we're changing the programming that's happening in our subconscious mind because it's programmed for us to do things the way it's doing them now. And if you keep doing things the way you're doing them now, you're going to keep getting the same result, right? Right. Yeah, so we need to be able to get into the subconscious mind and we also need to be able to bring the the right things to our conscious mind that relate to not just your values of who you are as a human being, but the values of who you will be when you've got the result of whatever it is you want and also, um, you know, address the conscious mind, the subconscious mind to get us there and whether or not for you, you want to get there faster, whether you want to get there with more joy, like whatever it is, this coaching framework is there to help us understand how we think, how we feel, how we take action, uh, 
and to separate that from what is a circumstance, like what's actually happening in our lives and enable us to get the result in the fastest, most enjoyable, whatever way possible, right? But to help us to get there. So that's the coaching framework that you and I are teaching to our clients in the Shame Life Coach School. It's the coaching framework that you and I use in ourselves. And it's definitely the coaching framework that I know many other coaches out there uh, base their work on. Obviously not all, but I know many of them out there are. And I think it's, I, I think if you're not using this framework, you're really, really missing out. And right. uh, yeah, really missing out. Right. You know, and, and for the frameworks that she's talking about, like she talks, she talks about the CT FAR and what I call it is the, um, the five step thought process. And that's actually a, a podcast that's already been done. And so you guys can definitely take a look at that as well, but we'll go into that a little bit deeper as well. Yeah. But one of the, the major things you just mentioned, um, is the, is the word programming. Right. Mm, yeah. And a lot of times, like when we talk about programming, you know, we think about computers and like, mm-hmm. like, you know, putting computers in and, and like the numbers and the digits and the dials and 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 um, programming the computer. Right. So that way yeah. it works at its highest functionality for us to use it as a tool to get our end result. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you think about like what you and I do like um I'm looking at my computer right now it, it's a like brand new Mac beautiful. computer yeah, yeah. right and uh-huh. it's beautiful it runs smoothly it's super fast it's going to go for a long time um but I've I've literally programmed it to run my business and my and my podcasting and like everything that I need this computer to do so that way I get the best result for my business. Yeah, you're putting the right software. Right. In. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we were very intentional with the programming that we put on there so that way we get the end result. But we don't think about the programming that we're using with our biggest computer, which is our brain. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's it's so important that we actually put in the right programming so that way we get the right result. And so, you know, when we think about programs, um, this is why, you know, going through some self-coaching and, and doing the, the coaching framework, as Krishna is talking about, this is why it's so important to know this information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. As you said, you, you kind of spoke about the computer program, like the human brain itself can process something ridiculous, like 11 million bits of information. You know, it's far more complex and amazing and beautiful than the best computers out there. Right. So uh, and that's fantastic that it can do that. And it does a lot of functions that we're just not even aware of. Like you don't think about making your heart beat. Right. It just goes about and does it. You know what I mean? Um, but as far as our conscious mind goes, we can process and handle something like 40 to 50 bits of information a second. So, you know, compare 11 billion bits of information to like 40 to 50 bits of information. So you can see like, wow, our conscious mind where we have our awareness is really powerful because we get to choose there. We get to yeah. we get to select what goes into our subconscious uh, we get to uh, reject what goes into our subconscious mind there. But it's only so small of an amount. So it's so important. We are intentional with it rather mm. than going on default. Like if you want something that different than you're experiencing, awareness of what we're thinking, awareness of what we're feeling, therefore awareness of what we're doing is imperative. And so that's why the self-coaching model of like, um you know, and I just call it the coaching framework. And that's why we need to make sure that we are aware of what's happening there. You know, yeah. like 95% of our life is coming from programs. And that's fine. If, like you've said, you've put the right software in that program. A lot of us need to take out the software that's on there because it's outdated. It takes way too long. It's messy. It's ugly. I think of when I started high school, not when I started high school, my last year of high school, I turned 50 next year, right? So, uh, you know, if I go back to my last year of high school was 1991. And uh, <laughs> for, com- for computer studies, what we did was we 
this was our lesson for computer studies. I, and I don't even know if they had computer studies uh, classes at school anymore because who needs them? Three-year-olds know how to use a computer, right? Right. But back, but, but back then, the <laughs> lesson, uh-huh, yeah, the lesson would be like log on, play a game called Where is Carmen San Diego? And I think the screens were in green and black. And then we would practice logging off. You know, that was our lesson. Now, I mean, that kind of software and the programs that they use, I I don't want to be playing that game, Where's Come San Diego? Well, I might for a little bit of nostalgia, right? But other than that, <laughs> like if I'm a game lover and say, I want to be the best gamer, like you're not going to be able to run that software. You need to right. update it. You need something that's actually aligned with who you are now, what you're able to do now, what games you're doing, you know? Yeah. It's just a, a little analogy there. But, yeah, if it would be helpful, I'd love to be able to dive in a little bit about the framework so that people kind of get a gist of what we're talking about here. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about this because, um, you know, I've also talked about, like, the the trauma cycle. Mm-hmm. You know, and one of the things that I've I've been thinking about as you as you've been talking are a couple of things. Number one, the whole 1991 computer thing. I was in first grade, <laughs> but I still remember doing that lesson uh-huh. too. I'm like, uh-huh. oh. yeah. And then like the tippy typing and stuff. Yeah, super cute. Uh, so I was getting a little bit of nostalgia there as well. But like the the really big piece here that I want to talk about is that um this this framework is actually the opposite of the trauma cycle you know yes. and we, we talk about like uh how trauma is uh like the opposite of trauma is actually creation mm-hmm. we think we think it's joy we think it's happiness we think uh you know all these things but actually those are the results of the opposite and mm-hmm. so um you know, when we get into the this coaching framework or the CT FAR, like you call it, or, or the five step thought process, like I call it, um, it really is the process of reversing that trauma cycle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you mentioned that the, I call it the CT FAR. Now, that's just an acronym for basically right. what the coaching framework is, right? Because the coaching framework deals with like what's the circumstance currently in your life and when we talk about circumstance we're we're speaking about what's factual what can you know for sure what like if there was a video camera there with the sound turned on and it was like watching it from all the different angles right so multiple video plays it's like going to be 100 provable as a fact right so there's that and uh, also other people's actions fall into a circumstance as well because they're out of your control. We're talking about self-coaching, like that goes into the circumstance, okay? And then we have the thought line. So again, it's CTFA. So then we have the thought line in terms of like, it's it's really important for us to become aware of actually what we're thinking. And it can be trippy for some people to like, just to start to notice their thoughts and, uh, and you know, think about what you're thinking about it can begin to be really really trippy yeah Uh, but yeah so much power in there so your thoughts and often people think that um like when they start to look at thoughts and circumstances they they mix up and think that a circumstance is like a thought uh or they think a circumstance is a fact but is actually their thought about the circumstance, right? And so that it can get, it's really interesting to really look at it and say, oh, this is what I'm thinking. Oh, this is the circumstance on this line. And then this is the thought of what's what the circumstance is. You know, this is where our perception is. And our perception comes, again, with all those subconscious programming uh, ideas, right, and filters and beliefs, right, because the, our beliefs sit in our subconscious mind. So it's going to filter everything through that. So if we want to be able to see something differently, often we've got to, we've got to go in and, and do some changing, again, of the subconscious mind. So we've got our thoughts, and then we've got our feelings, and then our thoughts and feelings lead to our actions. And by actions, I also mean the things that we don't do, right? Yeah, so or inaction. The, yep. uh-huh, yeah, action line, our inaction, what we do don't do and also what we react to right mm-hmm. so 
all of that's in the action line. And then lastly is the result, right? <laughs> and so if you know what your result is, like let's just say one of your clients want to heal their marriage, they they're both the husband and the spouse, the husband and the wife, uh, you know, they've had some problems. Maybe he's had a porn habit or a porn addiction. He's come open about it. He really wants to change. He wants to gain his wife's trust back. She wants to be able to, uh, they both want to be able to have conversations and be able to really dialogue openly about what's happening, what's coming up for them, process through the work themselves, right? Well, I mean, that's the result they want is to have a loving marriage with open communication and uh, and to have trust again right? right the circumstance might be right now that the husband has a porn habit right mm-hmm. that's the circumstance the circumstance is the stuff that's factually and and all the work that we do is in these three here right it's within our thoughts right. feelings and actions that's where all of our work is in there Right. But often we're blaming the circumstance and uh, and we're mourning the fact that we don't have the result yet, but we're putting all of our attention here on the circumstance. And there's like nothing you can do there. <laughs> that's not that's not where your power is. Your power is in looking at these three. So I feel like I'm nearly going to give you guys the finger. <laughs> <laughs> For those who will be listening to this, I'm like holding up my fingers and showing, and I was like nearly got my fingers confused. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> it's just like a, a little bit of an overview of yeah. what the coaching framework is. Again, um, I didn't invent it. If you don't mind, I'll share like a little bit of a, a history for how I discovered it. So how do you feel about boundaries? It's a legitimate question. A lot of people come to me really struggling with this concept. They often feel guilty for setting boundaries or they're not sure about even what a boundary is. You know, they've heard the term, set the boundary, things like that. But that's really confusing for them because it's not something that's well taught in our society nowadays. Right. They know that boundaries are really important to having healthy, constructive, supportive and wonderful relationships. But why? And oftentimes they also know that they feel like their boundaries are being violated, but they can't quite pinpoint what the boundary is that's being violated. That's why I've created the Clarifying and Creating Your Boundaries free PDF. You can find out what your boundaries are, how to tune in to what the boundary needs to be, and how to effectively create and communicate your boundary so that way you stay in this place that respects you, respects the other person, but also gives you the confidence in your boundaries so that way you stop being gaslighted, disrespected, and unseen. So having your boundaries really clear gives you a voice and also helps the other person stay in accountability with themselves. So that's not a role that you have to take on anymore. So if you are ready to really have clear boundaries, to really understand what your role is in the boundary, and to give yourself some safety and some protection against people that might try to gaslight you or are just being disrespectful, go grab my Creating and Clarifying Your Boundary PDF at ErinAndersonTheTraumaCoach.com. And while you're there, let's schedule a call with me. Come have a chat with me so that way I can really, really help you master this particular skill, creating boundaries, clarifying the boundary, communicating that boundary. And so that way I can also help you have relationships that show up to support you, cherish you and love you. So, yeah, and then I'd I'd be happy to do the same, Um, but yeah, like one of the things that um, as you're talking about this, like one of the things that I realized with this framework, too, is that it's it's not a linear line. You know, this is actually a a um, it's a cycle. And because 
no matter how you work it, whether you're in the trauma cycle or you work it backwards, okay, um, you can sit there and you can think about your, your circumstance over and over and over again, like you were saying, but that eventually does lead to the result, which gets you another circumstance, which leads to another result, which gets you another circumstance, and you just keep going over and over and over again, and this is where we find ourselves in the trauma cycle, right? Yeah, it's just not the result that you want. That's yeah, it. it's not the result you want. And so when you work it backwards, you can sit there and say, okay, so what is the result I want? Like getting really clear with yeah. that, you know, like um, saying something like, I want a trusting relationship again with mm-hmm. my spouse, right? I, yeah. I would really love my spouse to talk to me, trust me and communicate to me without feeling the need to um gaslight or lie right mm-hmm. and and i remember thinking this exact thing you know as i was going through my healing process with my husband right and it's um as i worked that backwards i had to ask myself so what actions am i taking this is where we get into extreme ownership here mm-hmm. what actions am i taking that's causing me to get something opposite of the result that I'm wanting yeah and it was a bit like eating a lemon that had been dipped in apple cider vinegar for like three weeks you know I was gonna say I love eating lemons (laughs) and I like apple cider vinegar for the health benefits I don't know about the three weeks yeah (laughs) it felt a little bit like that I'm just being honest but I had to get like super clear because if I were if I were going to if I was going to get that result, let me just get in, get clear with my English here. England, I, I think I know it. I think <laughs> I know it. I've only been speaking it for, you know, 39 years. I'm, I'm pretty sure I know English. Um, but like it had, it made me have to get very, very uh, honest with myself and see some things that I did not want to see. Mm-hmm. And then I had to, way do I really want this result Mm -hmm. because if I really want that this is the sacrifice that is required of me well as I kept working it back well what are the feelings that I need to have or that I desire to have what are the feelings I currently have and then you know um what are the thoughts that will you know support that feeling and I worked the cycle backwards Mm -hmm. And even though I couldn't change my husband, the way I responded to it has, you know, helped me grow into a whole different person. And, you know, you can testify to that, too. I mean, you know, I have known each other for what, like seven, eight years now. We've been mm-hmm. working together you know, in a very close relationship. And um, even in the last year, you know, I've seen like in myself just just a big growth. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely and as you speak about you know your journey and doing the reverse cycle uh I want people to know like we're very dynamic the way that our neural pathways um connect to one another you know so for instance someone might hear someone crying and to them that that sets off this whole trigger our neural pathways hearing someone crying it means that there's maybe maybe there's violence like it triggers a memory of violence and they're not even you're not necessarily thinking about it well you're not thinking about it uh you know subconscious you mean it could mean that for them because they heard their mother being hit and crying when they were a child right and they could be watching a movie with someone crying and subconsciously it's triggering a response for them mm-hmm. so it's really it's really powerful for us to like understand all the stories that we're carrying bring them up to the top of our awareness and like start doing the work what ones am I really gonna I'm happy to keep they're really helpful they're really powerful they're really leading my life in the direction I want to go which ones do I want to tweak a little bit because like they're they're close but they're not quite right and then which ones do I just want to let go and install like just a completely new software completely new way of thinking right so you know you mentioned your like you had that experience with your husband and that brought that to your awareness so whether or not it's like you're noticing something 
through taking an action or doing something or not doing something or whether a thought comes to mind or whether it's a feeling that triggers a response. They're all connected and uh, very intricate. And if you're working on one, it helps you to get clearer on the rest of them. So yeah, just, just so powerful for us to be able to really look at ourselves and see where am I in the tra- and in the trajectory of my life and where I am now and the potential that I have because, you know, we have beyond beyond what we can recognize potential, all of us. Yep. And if you think about doing something, there is a part of you that you know that that's actually something you can do. You might not be able to figure out the how and some of them might just be completely impossible and that's where we're going to need the the universe to orchestrate things for us. And I don't mean, I mean the universe is in the universe that God's created, right? He's the chef, the universe is the cake kind of situation. So that's what I mean. But it's like certain laws that are in are a natural operation. And so when you know what you want, and then you can begin to like, then the universe can begin to uh, really put things in order for you so that you can get what you want faster. But you need that clarity initially of what you want. And then you can do the homework of like working through your own thoughts and your Feelings, feelings usually sometimes people will give like this whole big bleh, vomit of like how they feel. Like you want to just kind of bring it down to like one word. This is how I'm feeling. I feel angry. I'm sad. I'm I'm grieving. I'm confused, you know, whatever the 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 feelings are, but start to really break things down and you can do amazing things and much, much faster when you can yes. separate. This is my thought about the thing. These are how I feel and ask myself, what are these feelings in alignment with the future that I want to create? If not, what, how do I want to feel this? How can I feel this more often? And it's not that sometimes people think you've got to create thoughts that really aren't your own thoughts. Sorry about the noise in the background. The dog's like not cooperating. Doesn't even know we're recording the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what? But you know, we want to like get everything in alignment. And uh, I'll actually share a bit of a story. So years ago, I this was before I was an entrepreneur, but I'd watched a movie called The Secret. And I don't know how many of your listeners have watched The Secret. I loved it though. When I listened to it, just something in me lit up and I was watching it with two of my best friends husband and wife and they were like we were all vibing off how each other felt and uh, as we watched it anyway I went over with them to the states and uh, while we were over there uh, oh, I'll back up a little bit so I had uh, one child at home I was breastfeeding still but uh, she was also eating so I was able to leave her I went over with $200 in my pocket and uh, I went to an event, a Bob Proctor event, and uh, I I hope some of your audience members have heard of Bob Proctor because he, right? he was amazing. He was amazing, yeah. And uh, he shared uh, something called the stick man. So the stick man is, was not a concept that was that he created. It was a concept created, I can't even remember his name right now, but basically if you imagine like, uh, you know, the big head and then the little body, and these little things coming out and it's just a way of of showing like uh you know your subconscious mind your conscious mind thoughts feelings and actions and and so I was like oh it really it's just to give a visual representation of how our mind works right in a way that we can grasp with a picture and um, as I was watching this it was like all these lights are going on for me and so really that was the first time I got to see like this visual representation of the power of your thoughts, feelings, actions, and how you can get the result that you want. So that started for me, like, I don't know, maybe my youngest daughter is 19 now. Oh my goodness. So maybe like 17 years ago was when I first heard it, but really to break it down even further into re- like just really getting clear and understanding what is a circumstance, what is a thought, what is a feeling, and then what is the action or or inaction or reaction that's go that you want in all of this, right? This is where your power is in the thoughts, feelings, actions. And so over the years, I've learned lots of different um ways of coaching and usually when I talk about coaching with someone 
there's a classic field of coaching as you and I know right and in the classic field of coaching it's more it's it's client led where you're asking questions and people are under it's under the assumption that your client knows the answers right that they it's within them mm-hmm. and that's and uh, you know I get theoretically how that's really great for me I've always operated more from like I mesh it <laughs> to like there's the coaching and then there's the the role modeling and the teaching and and the mentoring right so I bring all of that together when I'm with my clients because there's some things my, like my clients just actually don't know how to do yet and I want to make it faster for them so often a, a coach if you're not a coach listening to this and you're considering working with a coach they're not just going to use this framework with you or something like this framework with you they are hopefully they're going to know how to break down what's thoughts what's feelings what would be the right action or inaction for you Mm -hmm. um and so that hopefully they're able to help do that but also then they're going to help you cut down the amount of time it takes you to get the result because their experience or their knowledge or skills are going to be able to help you like say oh yeah do this this has been proven to work much faster, ding, ding, ding. So they're going to shorten that that uh, work for you. And I'll add the caveat also that though, like I'm a huge advocate of self-coaching and I think everyone should learn how to self-coach. Right. I think you should learn how to self-coach, right? Um, however, everyone has blind spots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone has blind spots. So it, it's still so essential and in my opinion uh, it's still essential to get outside support and help and sometimes yes. that means getting a coach even though you might learn how to self-coach right and you, I'm sitting here processing and you know having a little bit of a yawning issue behind yeah. all this but the thing that I love that you're bringing out here Kushla is is this idea that we already have the answers within us and and that's part of the reason why this this framework actually works so well is because we do you yeah. know, and granted, yes, like you said, there's there's times too where we're just like, ah, uh, you know, and I think this is where, you know, I get to talk about boundaries with mm-hmm. my clients is because oftentimes like people really honestly have no idea how to put boundaries together, right? But um, the one thing you mentioned too is like, you've seen people, I've seen people um when they get on calls with us, they kind of like do that whole word vomit. And, you know, I think it really, especially if you're going to get serious about doing this framework, um, one of the things that really will benefit you is doing a brain dump. That is your brain actually trying to dump all of the thoughts that are inside of it. So that way it can actually start unraveling it and, and organizing it. Your brain is, is a very, organized tool it likes being organized it likes knowing where it's going to put all of this information and it puts it in files and and folders and it's very much um it is like a supercomputer right but when some yeah and then some but Mm -hmm. when you've got all of these thoughts happening and you're not actually being intentional about getting it out of your brain and onto paper so you can start doing this framework, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you're you're going to really, really struggle to be able to focus on the healing work, the coaching work, and the work that it takes to be able to get that result that you're looking for. Yeah. So make sure that if you're getting serious about this, and this is one of the problems that comes up for you, is this need to talk a lot you know put some things into a brain dump write it down yeah I'll say this too uh you know when when we start to do uh self-coaching and or even when we're getting coached with a coach right we there are things that come up and at first you'll be like you'll see something as a problem well most coaches know the first problem that comes up is not really ever the problem that's very un- very rare that that's the case, right? Uh, unless the client has done a lot of the work and they're operating more from that conscious mind, conscious awareness, right? So it really does depend on where you are in the journey. But the problem for all of us is 
or the opportunity, depending how you look at it, right? The memories stored in our subconscious are often memories and and everything that you've ever uh, experienced, everything you've ever learned from these experiences, all stored in your subconscious mind, right? And the memories, though, they're often memories of events that are we've misconstrued. And uh, it's like we're looking at, say, a still photo of a, a, a video, right? And we're looking at one shot and we, we have no idea of the context of everything. And we can actually be left, in essence, uh, a part of us traumatized, even if we're not aware of it, because we've misconstrued at a point or time a particular event and you know that's that happens for all of us up until the age of seven you know maybe eight everything's been downloaded it's not like going through a conscious mind filter uh, like in our if this is where the stick man's really helpful right so if you imagine this is your mind not that your mind is contained in your head, people, just to be clear. So for those who can't see, if you're listening to the podcast, I've got my fingers together in a circle, put a line in the middle of them, right? And we just put the conscious mind in the top half and the subconscious mind down the bottom half. And this line, when we're born, it doesn't exist. Everything goes right. straight down. Like we're in a hypnotic state when mm -hmm. we're born, right? So everything just goes straight down in there. And, uh, and then... As we get older and older, it's like that line comes across more and more. So less will get through necessarily, but a lot of it still does, you know, mm -hmm. and until our reasoning faculties are, are like uh, there so that we can actually choose or reject an idea or, a, or you know, a thought or, or whatever. So, yeah, the, the issue is a lot of the time we're working with things that we believe that actually aren't true and honestly even mm -hmm. if they were true I mean you can use your you can like just change it right so that you can actually live your life the way that you want and do the things you want and experience the things you want and be the person you want to be right mm -hmm. if believing another way isn't helpful why would you do that right right so, <laughs> so well, you know yeah, it's really powerful you, you know you know as you're talking like one of the things that comes up like kept coming up to me is this this idea of like anger you know and as we're talking about like this framework right and the feelings um one of the things i've learned about anger is that there's there's a subconscious uh idea behind anger of i don't know what else to do but get angry you know what i mean yeah, and so like like ways, not yeah. not not like that anger is bad or, or like to feel angry but just like the way that we act upon the anger um you know like uh I'll, you know a story from me is you know before I healed um I was in a constant state of anger you know, mm -hmm. and constantly like lashing out at my kids, constantly lashing out at my husband and and all of my relationships. Fun day. And yeah, <laughs> right. It wasn't it fabulous, you know, and but as I got really honest with myself, I got realizing that whole idea of um, I just don't know what to do here. Mm -hmm. You know what? I just don't know what to do here. and. So when we get stuck like that, how does this framework help that? Yeah, so that's a great question. When we are stuck, right, really the first thing is is we want clarity. Mm -hmm. And uh, you kind of touched on it before. You spoke about like doing a brain dump and stuff. I, I have a process. I just call it the anti-dream, right? And basically you want to, do a, a write down a brain dump and it's really powerful to put your timer on for like say two minutes and once that timer starts you're not allowed to stop writing and you just write everything you don't want right everything you don't want at all and uh, if you want to you can put it in categories I don't want you know whatever right but you just want to just keep thinking and, and not um not thinking so you just want to keep writing and just let it come out and uh, actually I would if you want to put in categories, put it after, but just initially just do a brain dump. And then what you want to do is flip it and say, well, look, what's the opposite of this? 
you know mm -hmm. what's the opposite of this and that's going to get you way closer to recognizing what it is that you truly want because we live in a world of contrast and uh, you know if if there's something that we strongly dislike or hate it's really going to inf inform you like what you actually do want right so for mm -hmm. me I like I'm so into natural health you know and I'm like I don't like say medication right and so that's going to inform you well what I do like is I like whole foods I like da, da, da. I can give you this long list right I, I love like <laughs> all these other things and and that's just like a kind of a little example example you know? or, yeah or I don't like fighting I don't like mm. arguing I don't like having my kids be yelled at right mm. so what do you want uh the opposite of that would be being able to talk with my children calmly it would be being able to have uh like fun conversations relaxing conversations with my husband where I feel safe right mm -hmm. um it would so you can go in and it might you know go a little bit sideways so it might be like uh you know I want for us to be able to have time laughing together as you know parents and children you know mm -hmm. so sometimes it's the exact opposite and then sometimes you, you'll see oh and these other little things as well but yeah it's a really great and easy thing that anyone can do is just do a brain dump of like what don't I want what's your anti-dream and then you can flip it over to actually what's the dream by looking at the opposite and then taking it from there I love that. I love that. Yeah. And, you know, and as I've been thinking too, like a, a couple of things that I've been, because we're all in that state, you know what I mean? Where we're like, oh, I'm realizing I'm getting angry about this thing mm -hmm. and like, I don't know how to change it. Like, I know that that's why I'm getting angry because I don't know what else to do but get angry and show that mm -hmm. I'm angry, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, well, can I say, actually, sometimes people do, like, if, if you're just talking about their thinking mind, they know what to do, right? They they may, if they were to pause, if they could put the pause on, then their thinking mind could say, this is an option and this is an option. I could mm -hmm. walk out of the house and go get um, some fresh air. I could try repeating what they just said to make sure I understood it properly. You know, there's a whole bunch of things that a lot of the time people who are angry, they actually do know at least some of the things, maybe not like the most effective, maybe not the easiest way, but they do have some things that they know how to do. Um, but what it is, it's because they're in reaction, again, it's going straight to their subconscious, right? Mm -hmm. And the way that everything's connected. So it's going to bring up that old programming. That old programming taught them like, hey, I need to protect myself. Um, I need to raise my voice to be heard. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so all of these types of things straight into the old programming. And you're like, do I want to keep that? Not really. No, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, we get to choose. We get to choose. Yeah, and you absolutely do. You absolutely do. And like, I just like from my own personal experience and I, I I was thinking about this too like oftentimes there are times where I do still get angry and I'm like oh I do know what to do here mm -hmm. you know but then there's times too like where I'm like just feeling this intense running the program's you, running you know? the program's yeah running. the program's running and it, it's like hold on a second like what do I do what do I do what do I do and and it's it's it, what's and what ends up happening is your amygdala is is you know on fire and it's <laughs> shutting down your thinking brain right and we've talked a little bit about this yeah. and that's why we ask ourselves like we don't know what else to do but get yeah. angry and show that mm -hmm. we're angry right yeah. but, the, and, but and actually we if we're in that situation another thing that we can do and maybe you were going to say this but another thing we can do is actually just feel the feeling we, mm -hmm. we don't need to feel the feeling towards someone else we want to just feel the feeling for ourselves. so if you feel like there's nothing wrong with with the feelings no and actually i think it's oh i, I i've got to look up her name again i think it's jill bolt bolt bolty anyway she's an amazing uh neuroscientist like she's done some fascinating work but she has shown that you know any emotion if we just sit with it for 90 seconds it's going to chemically burn, burn itself, itself out, out of our body it's going to run its its course through our body right so often what we do is we try to push the emotion away uh or, or push it down 
And, you know, when we're, when we're doing those things, well, then we're going to dive straight into our subconscious programming, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But if we can sit with it and feel it, it's just going to do its job in our body. And so if you can say, okay, 90 seconds, you know, and just feel the feeling, just feel it, but don't, don't direct it out to anyone else. Just feel it. And, uh, and often then the solution can come to the surface of your mind the subconscious programs kind of settle down. It's like, we, we, there's like the danger's gone and then you can engage your conscious mind. And that amygdala is like, okay. Mm-hmm. it's the chem okay. and part of it is chemically the the body is doing certain things and the chemicals are actually changing so you can actually then begin to engage the other parts of your mind which make you capable of thinking <laughs> again right right, yeah. right. So and it, it, it's yeah and it's if you will sit with the with with it for 90 seconds and just not really think about it no, but not just, think about it. Yeah, just let yourself be angry. Because mm-hmm. the thing is, is it's, and I've had this question asked before, like, but I'm still angry, like, days later. And it's because it's, it's you're thinking about it. Yeah, right? you're re-triggering the thought, which is re-triggering yeah. the emotion. So it's not, and that will happen if you, like, you've just got to sit there and think not rerun the picture through your mind or through your ears however kind of you're strongly processing it not run the story through you again to try and re-trigger and think about what happened it's just purely being in your body and letting Mm -hmm. yourself feel the emotions so you might be like if words want to run through your head you might talk about where you're feeling the emotion in your body or notice where you're feeling the emotion in your body like you say, might be pinging down to my tailbone or to my shoulder or, mm-hmm. you know, all of that kind of stuff. So you can definitely make, you know, if you want to, you can talk through it, but not talk through what triggered it. Just talk through what you're experiencing as you sit there. Mm-hmm. That, that's Love one it. way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's really powerful because um, that gives you permission. You're actually giving yourself permission to feel your feels. Yeah. yeah you know what absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. And then, you know, after you felt it, then you can address what the trigger was. Yeah. You know, uh, trying to address the trigger in the emotion <laughs> is usually something that's going to consistently re-trigger you over and over and over yeah, for several days or, you know. Or years. And, or years. The rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 there are old people who, you know, we love our old people, but this has got plenty of their stuff that they haven't dealt with, right? Yeah. So... Yeah. You know, Absolutely. age doesn't necessarily mean that we've gotten the wisdom from our experiences enough that we are kind of going to change the programs right. that, that no longer work for us. Uh, I will give a little example for people just to make this a bit more easy for them to conceptualize with the emotions. So I want you to imagine that someone's told you that this really funny joke. Right? I'm I'm terrible at telling good jokes, so <laughs> I will tell them. You know, I'll tell one, right? So one of my sister told me it's the only joke that I remember on 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 core is like the horse walks into the bar and the bartender says, Why the long face? <laughs> See that cracks me up every time. <laughs> anyway, like that's a little it's a little bit that's my joke, right? Um I found that so funny that one's just like shh, that's in the subconscious that can bring it up at any time. But anyway, someone else tells you a funny joke, funnier joke than what I just did, right? And you're going to laugh if you just react, if you're just allowing yourself to react to it. You're going to laugh. Mm-hmm. You're going to feel the feeling of funniness or whatever the, the emotion is that goes with the joke. And if you don't keep running the joke through your head, eventually the joke's going to, like the funniness is going to stop and you're going to stop laughing. And chemically, that extra all the extra hormones and chemicals that have been released that were like making the laugh happen, they stop. And you just are like, okay, so you're back to normal. So what doesn't happen when someone tells a funny joke is you don't think, oh, I'm, I'll, I'll come back and laugh about that later, right? <laughs> and that's... And oh, they're just even thinking about that is hilarious. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? But that's what we do with a lot of the things that feel negative to us, like anger, um, you know, sadness, all of these things we we tell ourselves we can't experience this now. But actually, if you just sit with it for 90 seconds, and yes, something might 
uh, come into your awareness that will re-trigger it, say the, the loss of a child or the loss of a loved one, right? Um, initially, we can sit with the feeling. It, it's going to do its work. And then maybe you're going to walk into their bedroom and, you know, there is there is another trigger there, right? But the more you just sit with the emotion, the less things are going to need to like have a reaction to it. You've just come to a state of acceptance and peace, like uh, neutrality around it. And so then you can just get on to like making choices from your conscious mind versus your, your subconscious mind. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Absolutely. Like that makes sense for people. Yeah, absolutely. So Kushla, um, like this is, this is amazing, amazing stuff, you know, thinking about like the five step thought process or, or the CT far. Right. And mm-hmm. that's one way you can remember, you know, the five step yeah. thought process CT far. Mm-hmm. Um, but so what do we want our listeners to do next with this, yeah. uh, information? Like what, awesome. where, where do they get more <laughs> help with us? Okay, so I mean, there's a couple of things that they can do. We are running the first round of the Unashamed Life Coach School at the moment. Mm -hmm. So the doors are closed for that. But if you want to get on the waiting list, if learning how to self coach, you're like, you know, firstly coach yourself. And then also, if you want to coach others, if you like do want to build a really successful coaching business, helping others through their junk you know, trauma, all of that stuff. And it doesn't mean you're a trauma coach, you know, because trauma happens in all the fields. You know, people have yeah. trauma the way that they eat, the way that they communicate, all the things that they communicate. Um, so in, if you want to join us, then you can message Erin or I on Instagram. So your, what's your Instagram handle, Erin? It's Erin Anderson, Betrayal Trauma Coach. It's kind of long. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you'll find it. So right. it, or you can message me. My handle on Instagram is Kush Chadwick. And just type in Unashamed Life Coach School Waitlist. Okay. Yep, and then we okay. can send you information and let you know when we're going to open our doors again. So that's one thing. If if that is something that's calling to you right now, then absolutely go on the waitlist and there will be special bonuses and things that you'll get notified on like that. Once we start marketing it, generally speaking, those won't be available. But if you're in a wait list, they will be available. So, um, yeah, that's one thing. Another thing also is if they just want to come along and listen, um, you know, I have my own podcast, Confident Coach Academy podcast. Love to you can come and join me there. Uh, yeah. So, yes. Uh, Are you finally awesome. announcing that? <laughs> yes, I'm finally announcing it. <laughs> Yeah, it's in it. <laughs> yes. Come and join me on my own podcast, Confident Coach Academy podcast. Super excited to have you guys there. <laughs> Go do it, guys. I have been yeah. waiting for a long time for her to say <laughs> that. Those few words I've been waiting. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You'll come love join. It. Uh-huh. And it. if you're a coach also, you can come find my Facebook group. And um, you might have put in the show notes, Love Uprising. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I've forgotten the rest of the words. But if you put Love Uprising, uh, Business and Life Coaching, I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah. yeah. Come in there and uh, we can talk all those types of things if you're interested in coaching. If you're a coach or you want to become a better coach or all those things, then come join me over there. Right. And, you know, you also have a, a website too, right? Yeah. Yeah. ConfidentCoachAcademy.com. Yep. Yep. And mine is Erin Anderson, Betrayal Trauma. Mm-hmm coaching.com and so you can also you know check us out there and send us emails there as well if you are looking to get on that uh, waiting list as well so yeah yeah there's heaps of resources on Mm. on my website that they can find uh for ones who uh for coaches who really want to build their business up to their first uh i was going to say five figure months or six figure year so your first 100k or more then there's actually a quiz that you can take on the homepage of confidentcoachacademy.com so just go confidentcoachacademy.com forward slash quiz uh, or just go to the homepage and it's like the first thing that you'll see and there's a quiz and you get some really cool resources which I give you access to depending on what stage of the business you're in when you do the quiz so that's a really cool thing awesome love it love it love it all right everyone thanks so much for hanging out with Kushla and I today 
Uh, come join us. Totally. Come join us for the confident, the, the yeah, join us for the confident school. coach <laughs> academy and us for the unashamed life coach school. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> come join us. Join us. Come join, come join us. us. We'll have some fun and we will see you guys next time. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye. Okay, my loves, are you tired of feeling overwhelmed, like you have lost yourself in the trauma, and like you have to control everyone and their decisions all the time? If that is you, then I have a brand new freebie just for you to help you start to organize your life and your time to start reflecting more of what it is you truly want. I cannot tell you how many times I have heard clients and potential clients say that they just wish that they could find themselves again after the trauma, that the trauma is consuming their every thought and that they just cannot move past it and that they're feeling super, super overwhelmed by life and their responsibilities and that they just don't have time for themselves anymore. The aim with Organize for Healing is simply to help you simplify, get some answers, figure it out what it is that you truly do want, start gaining the confidence in yourself in your decisions and discover yourself again to get clear with who you are, have your own back and become your own best friend. Because my loves, when you truly, truly have those things, you are in true healing mode and in a mode where trauma cannot disrupt you again. So if you are ready to take some simple actions and simplify your life and to start getting back into play mode and start reclaiming your confidence, your desires and your life and identity again, go grab my free PDF, Organize for Healing, it is in the link below in the descriptions. Go grab it and I will see you on the other side. From my heart to your heart. Bye. Hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today and listening in on this podcasting episode. Don't forget to tune in next week. It's going to be awesome.